Welcome everyone to the MDM show with host Peter Shank, modern day mystic, and a very, very special guest that we have this evening or daytime, wherever you are in the world. We've got Shandini Larray. Shandini is coming to us all the way from Germany. So we're going to talk with her about her work and working with Dr. Emoto. So let me give a brief introduction of Shandini. Shandini in 2006 to through 2000 and 2000 to 2006, Shandini worked very closely with Dr. Emoto as his manager and associate. She's also in the past done some lecturing. Right now she is a sacred strategic and she works with sacred chocolate. Everyone, please welcome Shandini Larray to the MDM show. Woo All right. Yeah. <laughs> Moving up in the world. <laughs> and of course our esteemed host, Peter Shank. Take it away, Thanks, Peter. Uh, um Shandini, obviously it's an honor to have you on the show and there's a lot of inquiring minds out there that really want to know what you're about and the work that you did with Dr. Emoto who clearly um, you know, was the pioneer for my work over the last 10 years. Um, as a lot of you know me, after my wake up experience I needed a way to reach a lot of people and you know what really started me on my path was a video on YouTube from Dr. Moto when he charged a glass of water with love and you know the results were just mind-blowing so I had this idea that if I could somehow build a piece of technology and imprint an intent on water I could really bridge an unbelievable gap in the spiritual world and the technical world and I was actually able to do that very early on with Aquaware version 1.1 or 1.0, which is now Aquaware version 4.0. And I just, before we really get into this, I just want to tell you something. My mom uh, and dad were over here last night. And uh, unfortunately, yesterday, they made the decision to euthanize their cat. And uh, I charged a bottle of water before they went home last night with Cleanse and Rejuvenate General, uh, which works great on animals um, this morning. The cat was up and walking around, and everything is good. And the, the, actually, the testimony will be <laughs> up on the website in a little while. So I just, hey, mom, got to get that out there. <laughs> okay, so we're just gonna dive right into some really cool questions, um, you know, regarding Shandini and Dr. Emoto's work. So here we go, Shandini. Can you explain, you know, how you met Dr. Emoto and what your relationship with him was like? Um. Yes, of course. Um, I met Dr. Amado in the year 2000 in Switzerland. It was his first seminar in Europe and um, I was invited by a Swiss journalist who wrote for the Bennett Zeitung um, and it was a lecture that was organized for journalists and media people to get introduced to Emoto's work because he just came over from Japan and nobody really knew about him and his work and so the intention was to um, introduce European, German, Swiss people to Emoto's work and at that time I was um, doing research on crop circles in the south of England and I met that Swiss journalist and um, he told me that a Japanese scientist would come soon to Switzerland who did some studies on crop circle pictures that he exposed to water and then he got some very similar uh, results in the frozen crystals so the crop circle um, geometry was mirrored in the crystals that he got with a certain technology um, so I said, oh, I would like to meet him and about four weeks later he came to Switzerland and I um, yeah, attended the lecture in the first row with my colleague and a friend, the journalist, and Emoto was on stage, he was on the left side, in the middle was a screen, on the right side was uh, a translator 
a Japanese lady, um, but the translation was really very boring, and um, I couldn't I couldn't listen to her, and so I just watched those uh, wonderful pictures in the middle of the screen, and I listened to Emoto, and I noticed that he was always looking to me, but I was not sure because how could he? And um, well. Um, after the lecture, he came down the steps from the stage, and he approached me directly and talked to me in Japanese. And I told him I don't understand Japanese, and um, he said, "Oh, he was sure I would because he made some jokes and I was the only one laughing." So um, he got really interested in what I am doing, and um, he just left all the journalists and, and invited me to have a beer with him in the next restaurant. <laughs> And there we decided to um, work together. Well, he invited me to organize uh, the first seminar in Stuttgart, where I lived at that time. And he said he had to do something for the next four days, and then he would join me. And from that moment on, we were uh, always together, traveling through Europe and organizing lectures, visiting scientists at universities, meeting researchers, and um, yeah, spreading the word. That's it. That's how I met him. <laughs> and can you explain a little bit about what he was trying to accomplish with his life's work? Um, yes. The, the, the interesting thing is that he, um, he was a Japanese businessman until age 45. And um, he did business with a Dr. Lawrenson in California. And that Dr. Lawrenson is actually the first person known um, who worked with um, charged programmed water. So he was the first one who bottled uh, water with a certain information to heal. And it was um, <clears throat> that person that he did business with already. And um, one day he was visiting Dr. Lawrence in, in California, playing golf with him, and he hurt his ankle. And Dr. Lawrence offered him to spread some of his water over the ankle, and immediately the pain was gone. And that was how he got interested and in contact with programmed water. And so uh, from that moment on, he wanted to know more about the background and the technology they used to inform that water. And so Dr. Lawrence took him to the guy who uh, created the device, the MRA device, Magnetic Resonant Analyzer, and that was uh, Mr. Weinstock as well in California in Thousand Oaks. And um, he uh, showed Mr. Emoto how to use the MRA and signed a contract with him, so Mr. Emoto was the first guy um, to take this MRI to Japan and sell it exclusively. And I I think they only produced 15 um, of those MRI machines, and that's how he started his work. He treated 5,400 people with this device, and it was really dangerous because it was against the law. He was um, a, a manager of a, a company and not a doctor, so it was difficult for him. Um, but he uh, accumulated a lot of um, data. And I have this data just here with me. And he um, did research on several illnesses for about six years on 5,400 people who came to him to get diagnosed. And um, he made a list um, with um, four and five digit numbers, uh, codes for each organ, for each illness, for each emotion. And um, with that MRI device, he could not only diagnose problems, irritations, um, viruses, bacteria, anything, but he could send back the um, mirrored information, the frequency, and cure people like this. And that's how he s got started with it. But the problem was that it was against the law and that he was looking for um, um, a medium, uh, uh, something to put this information in that he could sell without being uh, charged for it, like um, it's not against the law. And so he uh, got an agreement with Dr. Lawrence to use his water, um, which is uh, called microcluster water. It's um, 
a specially treated water with oxygen um, that has a special molecular structure, which is especially good um, for programming water. And that's uh, what he did. So he charged the bottles and, and opened up a very small fa uh, manufacturer um, where he charged the bottles and where he got orders from people with se several illnesses or problems. And so um, that's how he started to get involved in water programming. And he always faced the same problem that people said this is not scientific and he cannot prove it. And one day he was walking home uh, on the street, it was in winter, and um, he saw some snowflakes falling down in front of his eyes and he noticed uh, the crystal structure. And uh, somehow he said, oh my god, that's what I need, I need um, frozen samples of the water. And that's how he got started with his technology, the microscope, uh, dark field microscope. And yeah, so that was the beginning. But the real thing that Emoto always wanted was to approach scientists, healers, technicians to use what he called Hado technology, uh, which he said is the same as quantum medicine, quantum technology. He wanted to introduce people working in the healing business or in the healing um, whatever level um, to use quantum physics and go beyond the molecular structure and look at uh, look deeper and beyond the molecules and just go even beyond the atomic structure so and that was possible with this device so in your your whole time with Dr. Emoto is there like one moment that really stands out that was just mind blowing? Something you experienced with him? <laughs> yeah, well, there are uh, many mind blowing moments, but the most shocking one was when we we were invited to to speak in front of 500 hand selected uh, guests. Uh, it was an invitation from the. Um, so German Association for Energetic Medicine and with the, the, the chief doctors and many therapists and well scientists from all over Germany and Switzerland and Austria and um, when, when we uh, went on stage Mr. Moto just declared to everybody that he's not going to speak one word and um, he said he's going to conduct an experiment and he wanted to show the power of Hado, uh, the quantum field, how it works. So he said he's going to give the lecture telepathically, and um, I will, uh, yeah, I will give the lecture to people. So um, that was the most shocking moment for me, but it worked perfectly. And from that moment, that's how we did it for years. Um, he just sat on a chair in the back of the, of the stage. And uh, he was even answering questions that way. He said, just connect to me with your throat chakra. And so, yeah, the audience was asking questions, really difficult scientific questions. And I was giving the most brilliant answers. And I never could have uh, even thought about it. So, yeah, he just threw me in the cold water. But it was nice. Wow, that's, uh, that's pretty impressive. It is. So let's fast forward um, a little bit. Uh, we met through David Shear, um, three or four connections about three weeks ago, and I introduced you to the work that I've been doing for for ten years. Mm -hmm. And you know, you've been um, now playing with Aquaware. So I'm curious, what you know, your first impression of Aquaware 4.0 was once it was up and running, and you kind of got the the concepts behind it. What, like, what went through your head? Well, the, the first thing was for me, how does this work? Because with uh, the machine, the devices, a motor worked and um, that I was introduced to and uh, learned how to use it. There was always some sort of sound and uh, with Aquaware I didn't hear one sound. And um, it was a lot of cables and buttons and, and things you had to hold in your hands and um, yeah, you had to focus on something in your mind, and so it was really totally different to use Aquaware, but um, it's much easier to use, and after 
um, my first questions, um, how is that really connected to the work of the model? How does it work? What does all those, you know, where do the, all those frequencies come from and why don't I hear anything and can it still work? Uh, I just gave it a try and um, as I told you, I used about 25 intents, <laughs> one after the other one. And Can we scratch that from the recording? <laughs> Don't do that, people. In, in the I'm beginning, I used a glass of water, but then I just skipped it because I said, this is too slow for me. I don't want to go back to that percentage uh, thing there. You have to choose the percentage. Oh, no, this is too slow for me. Uh, so, yeah, I, I just skipped a glass of water. I didn't want to spend the time to charge it and to program it and prepare it. And so I said, no, 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 there's enough water in my body. It should work that way. And so I chose 25 in 10 and pushed uh, <laughs> the limit. I, I chose 100%. I wanted don't, to <laughs> don't do that, folks. Not advisable. <laughs> I, I wanted to have the full experience, really. And so, yeah, it was great. I felt perfect after it, and I will do it again. I will do it every night from now on. I had um, several health issues for the last years and months, and after those 25 intents in one and a half hours, I felt so great, and, um, yeah, I, I just want to do it again. I love it. <laughs> you weren't glowing in the dark, were you, after that? <laughs> Yeah, I will start flying maybe. <laughs> so just a, a, a couple points there. Um, Shandini is very advanced. People um, don't don't do what she's saying. Uh, programming water in the body is inherently dangerous because water inside the body vibrates at different levels to support body function. Um, if you program water directly in the body. Um, you can throw out those functions and have a serious, serious detox. Now, uh, Shandini's a different altogether. I mean, she's playing with the technology now, um, but you know, it's kind of funny to listen to that. But please don't, don't, don't do that. It's not advisable. You will detox severely. Um, so let's just move along a little bit. So if, if you know, I never met Dr. Moto in life. Mm -hmm. um, just, it just never happened, and. If he knew of Aquaware um, at some point, well, he you know, knows. How would that fit into like his larger vision of what he wanted to accomplish? Well, I'm sure that he knows, and I'm sorry that I I just uh, uh, told about my experience, and um, I really don't recommend it to anybody because maybe really I'm different because I have been um, playing with water technology since the year 2000, so maybe. It works in another way for me, so please don't do it. And <laughs> yes, um, I have gone through the notes um, that I have from Dr. Emoto, and um, I have um, I have picked up some sentences that he wrote there, and I'm just having a look which one would be perfect for you, um, because almost every sentence would be perfect for you. But um, his um, goal and his wish that he could not accomplish was um, to create a sort of university where um, Hado technology is taught to people to use it in their um, jobs. Um, healers, um, normal people, but especially scientists and doctors. And um, he he was looking for a sort of software, and um, I have here um, a sentence that he wrote about the MRA device. Um, he wrote, uh, one of the functions is to check organs and tissues. The software installed in the MRA carries information regarding organs and tissues of healthy people. So that is how he started. He had a very simple software installed in the MRA that was able to um, diagnose people by comparing their frequency of, um, of their organs and tissue with the programmed um, frequency of healthy people, healthy organs and tissue. And whenever there was uh, a difference in the frequency, the, the MRA made a sound. And uh, that sound 
uh, Mr. Emoto could transform into an information those four and five digits, the codes. And that was what he was working on. But later, um, he had to find a way to reach out to people and it was too complicated and it was not really possible to use that device on stage so he focused on the message of water which is love and gratitude but um, that was just to spread the word and reach as many people as possible but it was not his real goal it was what people um, remember of Dr. Emoto and it's very very important to know that our mind, our thoughts and all sort of energies influence water and we can use that knowledge to heal even to to clean lakes and even prevent earthquakes and volcano outbreaks because he was very much interested in um, healing the planet and not only people from illnesses but as well the whole planet he was um, doing research on how to prevent tsunamis and outbreaks of volcanoes, all sort of catastrophes. And he was working on uh, finding out about food quality, side effects of medicine. I have a whole list of, of tasks that he could not accomplish. And I am very sure that with your device or your software, um, you are able to to finish what he started and um, yeah, people could use it in a very simple way because the MRA was a very complicated device and it was very expensive more than fifteen thousand dollars so only few people could use it and um, so your software is the very simple and very genius version of his work and um, yeah, that was, was his wish. He wanted to to create the base for what he called quantum or Hado medicine. And um, he wanted people to understand the cause of illnesses, the cause of catastrophes, natural catastrophes. And he said all this has its roots in Hado, in disturbed Hado. And um, I have a very nice um, meaning what he said is Hado. He said Hado, which is called today quantum, is the something um, critically important which is lacking right now. So the only something that is lacking right now is Hado, and Hado is the source of energy behind the creation of everything. So yeah, he focused on Hado because Hado is a very ancient science in Japan. and. Um, he was very happy to hear some years ago that the quantum um, physics theory has reached many um, aspects of science and we worked together with the bleed people and um, that was one of the highlights in his career to appear as well in the movie because that way the message was really spread and um, well he, he was not he was not able to finish his work because of many um, circumstances and many problems. And one was that uh, scientists were attacking him of not being scientific. And he really tried to find um, a way to prove that what he was doing is scientific. And I think you could accomplish this um, approach and this task. And it was his main wish to show that it is reproducible what he was talking about and not something that he imagined. So that's very interesting. Um, about four months ago there were two people that came across my work. Um, a book author and a Russian scientist and they're coming out with a book later this year and they wanted to prove that um, intention could be stored in water and they've used all kinds of devices to do it. And their theory was that water could only hold intention for seven seconds until they found Aquaware at the time was version 3.1. And they used highly specialized equipment. They wrote a white paper, um, which is on the website. You can go and read about it. And when people program water with an Aquaware intention, that intention 
is in the water indefinitely, according to their studies. Now, this is going to be published in their book a little bit later in the year. So, I mean, that in itself is almost kind of mind-blowing. And you touched on something really interesting. You said that Dr. Moto had the imagery of a snowflake. Mm -hmm. Kind of when I was starting down this path, um, I, I knew a lot of people in, in the industry. And one of these masters told me that a snowflake has the power to take a person around the universe and back. Mm -hmm. And I was like, wow. So, you know, when I got to work on Aquaware, very much uh, fractal geometry, um, which is really pure chaos, um, was, you know, brought into the, into the Aquaware programming as a two-dimensional uh, rudimentary picture. And then you know, when you, when you fire Aquaware up, and, and I'm thinking, you guys, you guys cool with this? I was thinking about doing a live on-screen Aquaware 4 demonstration for everybody using Dr. Omoto on their brilliant minds. Mm. How cool would that be? Ooh. What do you think? Yeah. So uh, everybody on the call, if you could, I think we're going to do this right now. If you could go get a glass of water, bottled water, whatever you got, and I'm going to uh, fire up Aquaware over here and we're going to do a live activation using uh, Dr. Omoto under Brilliant Minds. So, oh, she, you know, use a glass of water with this one, will you? <laughs> yeah, I have one here. <laughs> Make sure you give folks just a little bit of time to get water just in case. Folks, if you don't have water, go get some. Give them some. Plus, I want to post about it. Okay, I'm going to switch over here. Okay, give everybody another minute or two. Perfect. Can you guys see that okay? Yep. Maybe can you see it? Yes. Okay, so again, we're going to kind of pay a little bit of tribute to Dr. Moda by doing a live activation using Aquaware 4.0. Um, we're going to set Aquaware for standard mode, which is really beginner mode, which will run water preparation, user preparation, and then the selected intent. Um, a little bit about water preparation. You know, when, when I was doing my research, um, I needed a way to remove the programming in the energy and the structure from water um, prior to putting intent into it, and that's when water preparation was born. And then we needed a way for the subconscious mind of people to really open up and accept the intent, and that's where user prep came in. And then, of course, the intent would follow after that. Okay, so we're going to set the power level here to 81. So this one's going to be kind of high. This is uh, just um, you know, a number that I like to use. And under Brilliant Minds, we're going to come down. We're going to select Dr. Emoto. Now, again, Brilliant Minds feature in Aquaware 4, what I've done is I've taken 24 of the most influential people in all of humanity, and I've captured their best essence or qualities, and I've programmed them into Aquaware, thereby consciously directing what they were into water, and when you drink that water, you bring about what they were in life into yourself, which is uh, kind of kind of neat. Okay. Everybody got their water? Okay, so the way this works is uh, I'm going to count down. I'll go three, two, one. And where your attention goes, the intention will go. It doesn't matter if the water is next to your computer. It doesn't matter if it's a case of water downstairs. It doesn't matter if it's your bath water. It doesn't matter if it's, uh, you know, uh, a case of water in your friend's house on the other side of the planet or my favorite, a cup of coffee on Mars. Where your attention goes, the intention will follow. Um, the physics that govern aquaware, of course, or quantum, um, and there's a lot of dogma behind that, but it's very simple. Where you put your attention, the intention will go. Okay? So again, I'm going to count down three, two, one. I want everyone, when I hit one, just put your attention on your target water, and we're going to watch what happens. Here we go. Three, two, one. 
what's working now, this is water preparation. This is removing the memories and the imprints from the water. Water preparation runs for 22 seconds. Okay, and then it's going to start up user prep. User prep creates a layer in the water which is used by the subconscious mind for acceptance when the intent comes on. That's running now. Water prep and user prep run for 22 seconds. And then we're going to go right into the Dr. Emoto intent. And this is going to be kind of kind of neat to see what people's reaction to this is. This is Dr. Emoto nucleating now. Each intent runs for 44 seconds. My water is shaking. It's really vibrating physically. David, is your start to crawl out of the glass yet? <laughs> it's working on it. It's working on it. Excellent. <laughs> okay, we're almost done here. Now, when the intent's done running and you guys drink the water, notice the taste and the texture of it. Okay, everyone go ahead and drink as much as you want. But again, if you're new to this, we ran it at a very high percentile, so just um, you know, be careful how much you consume. Incredibly smooth. Mm. Wow. Shandini, inquiring minds want to know what's going on with you right now. Mm, I'm just happy. <laughs> <laughs> no, tell us about the water. The water. <laughs> the water, yeah, the water is nice. Uh, the water. I, I, I tried it, and I, I, I told you already that um, each one of those brilliant mind tastes very differently. So, um, yes, Emoto tastes very nice. <laughs> one, of my, one of my favorite flavors. <laughs> well, there you have it, folks. Uh, I like as well a uh, Mother Teresa. Nikola Tesla is a bit acid. So David, can you comment on the earlier beta versions of Nikola Tesla and what it did for uh, your friend? Oh my God! Yeah, I have this. Um... He becomes animated, folks. Oh my God, David, you're alive. <laughs> Uh, I have this very brilliant friend. He has a background in software design and engineering, physics, chemistry, math, and he has a great sense of humor also. And I originally started uh, programming water for him with increased creativity, and he w it was off the chart. He goes, David, you know, the, the ideas were flying out of me left and right. And he was working a uh, consulting gig, and his... Um, this client, where did he come up with this stuff? And then from out of nowhere, it popped in my head, given his background, hey, let's program some water with Nikola Tesla for you. Mm. In fact, the, uh, the intention was I possess and use the mind of uh, Tesla. And then we added a tail end, and it keeps expanding each and every day. Nothing happened for four or five days, and all of a sudden, bam. This man has taken the original concept that he was um, hired to work on in this company as a consultant and has increased it to such an extent. It's gone far beyond what anyone ever thought it would be. And the, and the great thing is he has yet to plateau. When we put the... Uh, the tail ender on it, it keeps us spending each and every day. This has been almost two years now, and there's no end to it. And now I asked him, yeah, how much, um, where you're at right now with this project, how much credit would you give uh, the program water? And he thought about it, he goes, oh, probably about 75%.
And you know, this is something he will never get over. I will never get over. And I cannot tell you what a privilege it is uh, for me to have done this for my friend. And he's still, and he's going off in other directions, doing things he never even thought possible. And there you have it, folks. This works. Sandy, how are you feeling now? Dr. Amoto running through you? Mm, yeah. <laughs> He was already since I got in contact with you because uh, I I remembered having that box with all those documents and lists and notes and pictures and slides and and everything. So um, yeah, I I think it's time to to get his word out and um, yes, tell people what he couldn't tell them and um. Yeah, I have so many sentences here that I, I would like to share with you, but I, don't, I know we don't have the time. So, um, yeah, well, would you like me to take, take, take one? Yeah, yeah, take take one that really kind of stands out and share it Absolutely. with us, please. Um, well, working with the water changed his life from one day to another. From the moment where he poured the water over his um, aching angle, ankle. Um, he couldn't stop thinking about it, and um, it was, of course, um, something really strange for his family and friends because he spent every night thinking about the water technology, and um, <laughs> people asked him, what are you going to do with it? And he said, I don't know, but I have to do it. Um, and, and I found some really <laughs> nice sentences here where he said, um, I have to understand the content first and then convey the message in my own way. So he was trying to translate a very complex science like quantum physics into very simple sentences that could be understood by everybody. That was his wish, his personal wish. And um, yeah, he said he has to go with all his might for it with everything he is and with everything he can do um, and he was not interested in fame he just wanted to get the word out and this is really what fascinated me and um, well I I just stopped my work at that time because I had a marketing agency and it did not interest me anymore and um, yeah uh, I stopped working with Emoto in a direct way 2006 because he went to America and I could not go with him. He asked me to come with him, but I have family here and I had, a, I had to take care of my, my kids. And so I, I thought I couldn't do it and I really regretted it. And I'm so happy that um, there is another chance and even, um, yeah, to, to share the things that Emoto couldn't share because he was so busy giving lectures and as well um, trying to write books. He wrote three books on water and um, as well on Hado. So he was really, really busy traveling and trying to talk to as many people as possible. So if Dr. Emoto was still with us and you know we, we met two or three weeks ago, how would he feel about the work that I've achieved over the last 10 years and where the, the technology is today? I mean, just in, in your opinion, you know, what, what would go through his mind? I think, or I'm sure that he's really happy about it and um, that he's kind of part of the team, you know, um, working through each one of us uh, in his own way um, to complete his work. Because you're the technician, you're engineer, or I don't know how you complete this. I have no idea. It's like magic for me, and it's <laughs> yeah, it, is. it works. I, I am, I am so grateful to have this toy now on my computer. I'm happy. I'm, I'm spending two hours every day with it, uh, and I think he's behind this. And um, yeah, he. He wants me to, to share his notes here and I don't know where to start, it's hundreds of pages and um, I think that he is really happy that you developed this within the last years and um, it is really the essence of his work and so just keep on going and just add whatever you have to add and 
I'm um, tired. I want to retire now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. So, you know, Dr. Omoto had a vision to change the world with water, to heal the planet, um, heal people. Um, I don't make any claims to anything Aquaware does. I never have. Um, it's a product that has never been um, reviewed by the FDA. Um, so anything clearly that people read about it on the website or forums or wherever are just really opinions. And, you know, if you have a medical issue, you always follow your doctor's uh, medical advice to the letter and the Vacuware helps you out. Well, that's great. Um, you know, water is the most programmable material on the planet. It will do anything for you. It's like... Um, in my belief system, I believe everything is made up of energy, right? And that energy is all interconnected. And you just made a comment about how Aquaware works. When I when I first started de developing, you know, the software, I had the, my right hand side of my brain is all analytical. I've been a consumer of everything electronic since I could crawl, pretty much. And then this metaphysical world started on the left hand side. And I needed a way to bridge these two worlds. And it was easy for me to write a computer program. And, you know, people have been programming water forever in a whole bunch of different ways. But if I could use the power of the microprocessor to push intent, that would be far more powerful than, you know, 100,000 monks just hanging out around some water, you know, singing kumbaya or whatever uh, to get it done. Um, so the quantum realm was the key. So I started researching all of this stuff, quantum this, quantum that, what the bleep do we know, and I started getting frustrated because there's so much dogma out there in the world of what the quantum realm really is. And it, it, in its simplistic form, forget about all the formulas, forget about all the mathematics behind it. If you're intuitive, you know at its simplest form that if everything is made up of energy and that energy is all interconnected, that interconnectedness is the quantum realm and you're continually a part of it. So I needed a way to punch a hole from the software into this realm. And if I could do that once inside the realm of quantum, you know there is no space, time, or distance. There is no past or future, there's only the now. And that intent, if I, if you could direct it into the quantum, that would allow you to target any water, anywhere, anytime, simply by putting your attention on it. And I was able to achieve that via software. Uh, Aquaware is always the first generation um, of a new engine I call the Aquaware engine. So every time I rewrite the code within Aquaware, the code gets tighter. Um, you know, that hole that gets punched in the quantum, if you will, gets tighter. And then I use the Aquaware engine as a model to uh, upgrade the entire line, which we're going to now. So Aquaware 4 came out in December. Then we had Lightbody, which was a new product that we introduced a few weeks back. Then we had Smoke Erased. Uh, clearly, Navitus is free. Those all support the Aquaware 4.0 technology. Now, the Source 4, which is all about manifestation, and the twelfth project, which is all about virtual and physical chakras, or you know, or the upgrade to them is now underway with the Aquaware Four um, technology. So I'm very consumer oriented. I listen to my customers and what they want. And one of the the biggest complaints today is it only runs on a Windows PC. Well, I'm a Mac person. What do I do? Um, in the fall all the technology is going to a whole new level. Um, downloadable media is really becoming a thing that of the past. Everybody's putting everything in the cloud. So last summer I was at the Amazon AWS show in the Javits Center in New York City and I was introduced to something called cloud computing and these amazing ideas started coming up. If, if you could go to the MDM site and log in Right to a really slick portal, and you have an avatar. Everyone knows what an avatar is. It's kind of like a, a cartoon character that kind of helps you on the screen. Well, there's a company that streams avatars in real time. They get rendered in the stream down to your computer, down to your web browser, more exactly. So the avatar would help you set up your intent. So 
all this technology within the next 12 to 18 months is going into the cloud. You'll log on to the MDM site. It'll probably be some type of subscription-based uh, model. I don't know yet. There's still a lot of things that need to be worked out. But the avatar will help you set up your intent whatever it is, and the core technology will still oh. remain the same. But the cool thing about this is it's not only going to be Windows-based anymore, you're going to be able to use it on your Android smartphone, you're going to be able to use it on your iOS device, iPhone, iPad, and you'll be able to use it on the Mac operating system. So basically anything with a web browser, you'll be able to get to the technology. Um, and some of you are thinking, well, you know, I, I like having my downloadable, so there's probably going to be a mix and a match in there somewhere. So, CNT, we've been focusing on Aquaware. I know you've had time to play with the 12 Project, the Source, Lightbody, and Smoke Erase. Kind of, you know, what are your thoughts around those? Well, um, I spend most of my time using Aquaware because it's the most complex. Um, software and it it helps me with my uh, health issues or the things that I'm interested in um, to change in my life so I found all sort of intent in Aquaware but um, if someone has only one wish like um, to quit smoking it might be easier to use that software exactly for that purpose and as well the other ones like the light body and then and so they are more specialized and aquaware is really really complex and so um, if I had to choose um, to buy only one of those products I would I would buy aquaware because it has uh, such a huge possibility of, of intents that I could use in everyday life so that is my favorite but the other ones are great as well. But it's it's based on the same principle. But um, yeah, I prefer <laughs> Aquaware. <laughs> um, David, can you talk a couple of minutes about um, Tommy Warner and what um, Aquaware did for him? Oh my God! Yeah, Tommy and I uh, we've been friends for 15 years. This month we met when I was uh, a census enumerator in the year 2000, and we just we just clicked. Anyway, uh, he's been been my mechanic uh, since then. He's also a he's also been racing uh, cars for the last 31, 32 years. And a couple of years ago, he uh, Tommy suffered an optic nerve stroke. I'd never heard of that before. And he um, he was left with five percent vision in his right eye, and fifty five percent in his left eye. And uh, my car had been running great, so I hadn't seen him in a while. I just, I have this knack for being at the right place at the right time. And I happened to have a bottle of water that I programmed with uh, Cool Down Body that I was going to give to a friend, but I wasn't able to meet with them. So I offered it to Tommy, and he gave me this funny look. Yeah, it's going to cool me down. It was really hot that day. I saw him the next day. He goes, Dave, you're not going to believe this. You know, my crew, um, uh, his mechanic crew, his garage, they were sweating their butts off. They hadn't even broken a sweat. They're looking like, what's going on here? And then it just came, he, he was telling me about his uh, problem with his eyesight. And so what I did, I programmed some water for him to help his driving ability, to actually get him to drive like Dale Earnhardt. And uh, within like a couple weeks, he started winning again. He'd been racing oval dirt track, and I think the best he had uh, placed was maybe fourth. And he started doing better, and he kept doing better. And then one night he called me and said, you're not going to believe this. I think my vision is starting to return. And uh, to make a long story short, his vision has kept improving. Uh, the last racing season, he wound up dominating his division. The closest driver behind him was over, was about 300, over 300 points behind him. And Tommy had missed four races due to you're going on a cruise, going to a wedding. And uh, as of last November, that was his last eye exam. He had lost his glasses, and um, the optician, the optometrist, that. Uh, uh, 
He gave him the eye exam, measured his uh, vision in his right eye at 72%, and the vision in his left eye at 90%. And he said, quite frankly, I don't, I, I can't see how you can even see because your optic nerve is still twisted. He was totally beside himself. Anyway, Tommy was able to get his, uh, see good enough to get his commercial driver's license. And I mean, his life is very, very great now. And right now, he's uh, ready. He's building a car for his 14 year old son, David. He's going to start racing. You know, cool. before that, basically his life was over. <laughs> and this is something I will never, never, ever get over in my life. It doesn't get any better than that. Dave, thanks for sharing that. <laughs> I <laughs> love hearing about that story. Shandini, um, from your perspective, how can Aquaware 4 and the technology and what's going to come beyond that help change the world? Well, I have a perfect answer for you. Uh, I just recite Mr. Emoto. He said, Among all substances on this planet, water acts as the best conductor between the world of possibilities and the world we experience as reality. Whoa. That's a powerful statement. You want to have it? <laughs> <laughs> so the, the perfect answer, I just... I just found this on the top of my papers when you were asking me, and I said, "Oh wow, this is really, <laughs> this is really cool," because I love how the universe um, works. It confirms uh, the value of your work, and it answers your question: how to heal the world. Water is the bridge, the conductor between the world of possibilities and the world we experience as reality. So, uh, with the help of water and programmed water. We can bring down all things from the world of possibilities, which is infinite, and um, create the reality we want to experience. That's, <laughs> yeah. uh, that's, that's so awesome. Shanine, do you get the, the feeling that um, Dr. Moto is, is here with us and feeling the spirit? Well, you know, the thing is, I never had the feeling that he left, so uh -huh. I, I really have big problems imagining that he's not here anymore because he was always with me and wherever I, I went I always took the, the water wisdom or knowledge with me even to sacred chocolate which is um, as well something that uses the same technology to program water or in that case chocolate. Yeah. So whatever I'm doing since 2000 is based on the same thing like informing programming water and things with energy and my favorite energy is love. So that's it. That's awesome. That's and a I cool know there's a frequency in Aquaware <laughs> for it. <laughs> yeah. You know, um, it's kind of funny. Uh, the lo the love intent is, is one that I I tell people to use a lot of because it's very very potent. And in the earlier iterations of the technology, for some reason, and programmatically, I've never figured this out. When you went to the drop down menu under human potential. They're, they're in alphabetical or sequential order, but it always started with love. Mm. It, was the, it was the weirdest thing, and then when, when 4 came along, it, it didn't work like that anymore, but I, I never figured it out. It was just I was always stuck on love. Um, another great intention in Aquaware is under um, Cleanse and Rejuvenate in general. That one is amazing on plants and animals. Uh, clearly, my mom, you know, with the, with the cat... Um, but that one is is, is really amazing. C can you share the, the the chocolate thing with us, Shandini? What you're doing with that? That sounded pretty interesting. Sorry, the which one? The the, the chocolate. Uh, the chocolate. The oh, sacred chocolate. Yes, the sacred chocolate. It's it's called sacred because uh, of the love inside. And um, Steve Adler is uh, one of the founders of Sacred Chocolate, and he praise over the chocolate and he knows about Emoto's work as well and Emoto um, just concentrated the essence of his work and his findings in two words love and gratitude because the frequency of those two words 
were the highest and the most beautiful um, formation and geometry that he found in the crystal structures. So he said the essence of his work is love and gratitude, and that is what Steve, um, Sacred Steve from Sacred Chocolate, is using um, when they are producing uh, the chocolate. And so um, some people can uh, feel this energy. Um, some very sensitive people um, can feel this. They can sense it, and they ask what kind of energy is in that chocolate. And it's really something special, and, and I love this product. Well, you have to try it. <laughs> so if, if, if someone that listens to the replay or is on the call live wanted to get hold of some of the sacred chocolate, how would they do it? Where would they go? Well, they can find us on Facebook. Um, uh, we have the sacred chocolate page on Facebook and as well www.sacredchocolate.com and, um, yeah, and if, if somebody has questions um, I'm happy to answer any questions. Uh, that's pretty uh, cool. You find me on Facebook, uh, Chandini Larray, just contact me. <laughs> Donna, do we, have, um, do we have any questions from the audience? You know, I, I, Peter, I think everyone is just enthralled with everything going on with, with the conversations. And um, let me do a quick check just to see if anyone has posted in the um, in YouTube or in Google Plus and even Facebook. Um, haven't seen any questions pop up. So if anyone has anything, um, I think they're just too um, overwhelmed with <laughs> listening to Shandini talk about her experience with Dr. Emoto and, of course, um, what he was wanting to do and, and what he did Let's back up and say what he did with water and of course you furthering that as well so I want to put no question I want to put David on the spot David what do you think of Shandini and uh, coming to the show <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow no this is actually a dream <laughs> things like this show up around me though hey Kip, can I bring something up um my friend Ashley was very interested in using the software. However, he's a Mac guy. Then he discovered that Best Buy is, they're selling small tablets. They're running Windows for around $100. He went down there, picked up a tablet, and he's running AquaWare now. <laughs> he, didn't have, he didn't have to worry about getting the parallel software or buying a used laptop. Yeah. It's working fine on his tablet. I um I was down in Staples and they're they're running um net netbook computers that are running Windows 8 with two gigs of memory and 32 gig hard drives and it, it runs Aquaware and everything perfectly. A little bit more expensive than a tablet, but uh, they're pretty wild. So okay, cool. So Sandini, do you have any closing statements for the audience? Um. Well, yes. Go for it. That was his wish, with all his might, and um, yeah, well, let's let's use the water, because that's, I think, the best way we can do, and just program it with love and gratitude and everything else, because water loves to be programmed, and there's another sentence, maybe, um, to finish, Emoto said, if you want to understand water, you have to treat it like a lover. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. I like that one. David David's got a great story about that one, but Love I don't know if that's ready for prime time. <laughs> Wait for next week for that. Yeah, treat it like a lover. Treat it I like that. And you know what? I think that's absolutely true. We should treat water as an a lover. Yes. It is, Absolutely. and you know, water loves to be treated as a lover, and it loves you so much back. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. Wow. I like that. That's perfect. <laughs> so, Donna, what type of show specials we got going on this week? Yeah, you know, that's, wow. I'm in awe of that. So, folks, of course, great specials on the bundles for not just Aquaware, but Light Body, Smoky Race, and The Source, we've got those bundles already on the um, website, www.moderndaymystic.com. Go there, 
the coupon or the code that you want to use is 33 off show. And if you haven't figured that out, it's 30% off, folks, 33% off. So the great time to take advantage of this. And the bundles, of course, they come with Peter's time as well. Just a half an hour. No, okay, so. I'm changing that. I'm going to bump that up to an hour. Oh, all right, folks. Well, even better. Oh. Um, I know. I'm gonna be. On, I'm gonna be on you, Peter, on that. So get the bundles. They are 33% off. Use the code 33 off show. You get an hour of Peter's time with the bundle. So as you set up the programs, and then of course set them up, use them, then contact. That's my suggestion. Then contact Peter and say, hey. You know, here's what I'm experiencing when I'm using the software, or what are your suggestions? Use that time wisely. You know, Peter is extremely busy, which is why I'm a little bit on him about his time. So definitely. Hey, okay, mom. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know the deal. So definitely tap, um, take advantage of that, folks. It's an amazing special, and I'm not going to let him run it too much. So end of the week is when it's over. Do we have a coupon code for that? 33 off show. There you go. 33 off show. www.moderndaymystic. I think the, the four of us are going to be on another show here pretty quick. Hmm. <laughs> We're bouncing around today. <laughs> Dandini, uh, I yeah. think I'd like to just take like 10 seconds out and just honor Dr. Emoto in any way you want. I yeah. think it's, uh, you know, just 10 seconds of silence. Then we'll ring a bell, maybe. Mm -hmm. Well, he was a modern day mystic, so. Well, you know, it's interesting. The entire time, he's been over your left shoulder with his right hand on your left shoulder. That's awesome. Well, nothing to add to this. <laughs> <laughs> he was one of my best friends, and he still is. Good. That's awesome. Okay, folks. Shandini, this was amazing. Uh, I can't thank you enough for coming on the show and uh, you know just blowing our minds with you know your intimate knowledge of uh, what Dr. Moto was about. I think there was some stuff that came out that um, you know the general public doesn't know, and the, you know as you know, there's a lot of people that follow him. So, what do you think, Donna? Can we get Chandini back one week for a and a with everybody? Well, Chandini, what do you think? Can we get you back in and we explore even more and answer questions? Well, like if Mr. Emoto response. agrees, we will be on your show again. Awesome. Yeah. So, let's it's plan again. Honor. Let's plan for it next week. Same time, folks. Uh, we got to honor Shandini's time. She is in Germany, so we do have that huge time difference to contend with. We are going to be on at the same time next week, 2.30 Eastern, 20.30 in Europe, um, Germany, and 11.30 a.m. Pacific time. Awesome. Anna, David, Shandini, thank you. Well, thank you so much. <laughs> thank you all. Cheers. <laughs> cheers. <laughs> yeah, cheers. <laughs> With love. And gratitude. Love your water. Love. Treat it like a lover, folks. Come on now. Get in there. And <laughs> 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 I'm going to take a shower. <laughs> Thanks, everybody. Appreciate Bye, it. Shandy, Alcivita Oh yes, please. And and thank you, David, for connecting us. Pleasure was all mine. Right on. Yeah, David, that was a good move. Great <laughs> right, move. Woohoo! Woo! All right, everyone. Next week. Yes. See you next week, everyone. Same time. <laughs>